Hi, it's Jordan from Citywide Mortgages again. I'm speaking with Gary Wong today on a topic uh, that's very important uh, here in the Vancouver market. It's the pre-sale market and one of the questions is why we should never walk away from a pre-sale. So welcome Gary, thank you very much for taking the thank time. Thank you Jordan for inviting me. Thanks. So the reason I wanted to do this video is because I had a client who had to walk away from her pre-sale purchase. Uh, what happened was she was not able to complete making her, her, her payments, her deposit payments. She had missed uh, her second payment. Um, and then the developer came back and said, well, since you have missed your, your payment, we need the full 20% up front. And we also want a letter from your bank showing that you are qualified for this amount. Now, the problem was that she, was that she did not get qualified uh, to start with before she actually purchased um, this pre-sale uh, mm -hmm. development, which was a major no-no. So when she first, you know, signed on the dotted line that she was going to be purchasing this, she did not at that time know whether or not she actually qualified for a mortgage. Mm. So she should have chosen a realtor who would have helped her get pre-qualified. Well, that would, <laughs> that would have been a good start. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, the developer wrote her this letter and said, you will need to, to provide a letter. And at that point, she kind of felt like she was, uh, you know, at a loss. And so she said, fine, I will walk away. Um, unfortunately, she did not uh, call me at the time when she got her letter, but did call me um, you know, a couple of weeks after, at which point I said, well, let's get to that letter, go back to the developer and mm -hmm. say, I've got my letter now, is there any, any chance? So um, the, the lesson here is, is obviously get qualified before you make the purchase mm -hmm. uh, so that you know um, that you can qualify for that mortgage and so that you're aware of what is going to happen through the process. Mm -hmm. I spoke with Gary after, after this and Gary said, oh, wow, uh, you know, a client never has reason to walk away from a pre-sale. So, Gary, why is that? And, and how could this situation have been avoided for my client who unfortunately mm -hmm. did end up having to walk away from her purchase, forfeiting her, her, her deposit? So one of the key mistakes I see here is that they go to a pre-sale center, a presentation center, and they see a unit and they don't recognize that the sales rep who works at that presentation center is not working in the best interest of that purchaser. So they should actually hire a realtor, which uh, doesn't cost anything, and the realtor should help her get pre-qualified and determine whether that pre-sale is actually a good fit for her. Yeah. So that's the first mistake. So obviously she goes to uh, buy the pre-sale and uh, the sales rep is not gonna care whether she can qualify for financing or not. So you got a seven day rescission period. So within seven days, if you change your mind, That's you can right. get a refund. And I guess she she uh, didn't rescind, so she kept it and she realized that she couldn't afford the payments. Um, luckily for her in this market, uh, it's a great um, uh, great market where you know the properties are going up and she bought a pre-sale in a very good Vancouver uh, area. That's right, neighborhood. yes. And the, by the time she uh, was about to miss, miss on those payments, she could have just assigned the property exactly. easily. And there are obviously, uh, if you're working with the realtor, the realtor would read the contract and make sure that the property can, could be assigned because there is a certain timeline where you can assign. You can't just buy it and then sign it a week later. There's usually like a, a blackout period for you know six months to 18 months, right? So but she had passed the blackout period, right? Where she could probably, the, but I'm not sure, did, she, did it pass the blackout period or not? I don't know. Yeah, so if it did, which I think she had owned the property for about a year, or yes, so. yes. So probably it had passed up past the blackout period. And uh, I know the name of the developer and the development. It's, um, yeah, chances are she would have been easily able to assign it. It's a, it's a property in a great area, great neighborhood, mm -hmm. high in demand. She would have been able to flip it 
and for profit and make money actually. But unfortunately, she ended up losing her deposit. So I think the more moral of the story is, is, you know, make sure you know what your options are. Pick up the phone, call your mortgage broker, call your realtor, say, mm -hmm. this has happened. Um, what, what can I do about it? Uh, because in this case, unfortunately, she did have to walk away from this because it was just left too late and there was not anything we could do. Um, so she did have to forfeit her deposit. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Gary, for that. And Gary, you. you can be reached at... Uh, people can find me on www.garywongrealty.com. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, and also, I have a very uh, popular YouTube channel. You can find it at vancouverrealestatetv.com. Great. Thanks, Gary. And again, it's Jordan Thompson, Citywide Mortgages, jordanthompson.ca. Have a great day. Have a great day.